I was actually born and raised in Jackson, Mississippi. And while I wasn't born and raised in the times of the help, a lot of the same structures in the homes were still in place. Mississippi is like my mother. I'm allowed to talk about her all I want, but God help the person that says something bad about her around me. I'm proud for this project because I think it gives a voice to so many people who have been basically invisible. And we went through something really special here. We started our friendships in Mississippi, and we got to come back and do a project together that is an homage to how we grew up and what our lives were like. And it's, it's just been a really kind of magical experience. Catherine and I have been best friends since we were about five years old. We uh, went to Covenant Presbyterian pre-primer together. Tate just has such a huge personality, and either he's your best friend and making your life wonderful, or he's, he's taking a piss in your mouthwash. I wouldn't say we were the oddballs in town, but we just kind of were nonconformist in many ways, and people like that usually find each other, and, and we did. There was just this awareness that we didn't quite fit in to this idea of what a nice Southern gentleman and a nice Southern lady should be. And uh, we've been best friends ever since. I'm standing in front of Coatsworth Plantation, and this was the location of Celia Foote's house where many worked. It's funny, I'd always known about this location uh, from once I was a young child. Cat Williams, the owner's land, backs up against some of my relatives' land, and we used to come up here to go hunting and fishing. And when I was a kid, they would tell me, do not venture onto Cat Williams' land, she'll shoot you. And uh, I believed them, so I never did. I would walk along the property as a kid and stare at this big white house up on the hill, and I just was always so curious about it. How the help came about in Catherine's mind is, is pretty remarkable. I was working in New York, and I told my boss, I said, I'm taking a month off just to write. And that was, you know, September 10th. And the next day was September 11th. Like all of us, everything we knew up into that point in time was just different. And she was trying so hard to think, what's going to make me feel better? What will make me heal, and then it dawned on her that the only thing that would make her feel comfort is if she could go back in time and, and sit in the lap of Dimitri. Dimitri came to work for my grandmother, and she worked for our family for 32 years. She always would pull us aside and tell us how special we were, and whenever she saw you, her face just lit up. I never saw her out of her white uniform until she was in her casket. It was the first time our whole family came together and just mourned so openly. As I wrote in her voice, it was so incredibly comforting. And I started to ask myself for the first time, age, gosh, what, 30? What was she thinking all those years? We're at the Whittington Farm, which is about a quarter mile outside of Greenwood. And once you're outside of Greenwood, a quarter mile, it's all farmland. We chose this just because it felt like where Skeeter and the Feelings would have lived. So behind me, you'll see a widow's walk uh, where we had Charlotte Phelan spy on Skeeter and Stewart under the willow tree, and that was not here. And we built that under the Whittington house, and they have decided they want to keep it. And I've now learned that's their cocktail spot. Miss Whittington, where's your cocktail spot? On the widow's walk. And there we go. At 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. I bet 4 sometimes, right? 5-ish. I first met Tate Taylor the summer of 1995, and uh, we were both PAs on A Time to Kill. Uh, well, actually, he was a PA. I was an associate casting director. She called it extras casting associate. She was a PA. And, um, and we developed a great friendship. 
Octavia's first motorcycle ride. Give us some gas. This is gas. Yeah. This is gas. When I found out he was moving out to Los Angeles, I moved out a week before him so I could say he followed me out. Oh, wait, no, because you're going to do Kate, Catherine, and my mom were all friends in the past, but we went to rival high school. So I didn't meet him until I was about 25 years old. One thing about Tate is that he has this amazing web of friends, and he loves to mix them all together. Uh, Thanksgiving has sort of fallen by the wayside in our family because we're all all over the place, and it's just it's just a hard holiday to get together for. So I started spending a, quite a lot of my Thanksgivings with Tate and Octavia and Brunson and, and Kitty. Sometimes when she was out there, we slowly became each other's family in California. You know, as I was writing the character of Abilene, who reminded me so much of Dimitri, I found that Abilene had these things to say that weren't in her character, you know? Um, she started mouthing off. And I kept thinking about Octavia. So I constructed this cocktail that was mini. And the first time I saw Octavia after I'd written that character, you know, I was terrified, but I felt compelled to tell her. And I said, you know, Octavia, I've written this book. Remember you said you were gonna read? And I said, yes, yes. And she said, well, you have to because I sort of based a character on you. And I know, I could feel her watching me and I'm thinking, am I Halle Berry in this novel? Am I like Denzel's love interest? What could this novel possibly be about? You know, I mean, come on. We're standing in the Franklin House in Greenwood, Mississippi, and this location is what we use as the interior of Skeeter's house. So we married the Whittington Farm outside exterior with this as the interior. And this house has a special place in my heart because um, Webster, the son of the Franklins, and I went to college together. And I would come down here with a bunch of friends and we would spend weekends here and stay and have a really good time. And this was the grand staircase. And then Stephen Goldblatt had the great idea for the shot of Skeeter's entrance, which we had a crane that slowly rose as she went up each and every, every facet of the stairwell. Catherine, she told me she was gonna be sending me the manuscript, and when I saw it, it was like as thick as a phone book. And I sat down and I read the first page, and I'm like, oh, because there's a dialect, and it kind of turned me off a little bit. Time to time, I think I might find myself a man, one for my church. Problem is, as much as I love the Lord, church going man never do all that much for me. As a white southerner, you just didn't talk about race as a woman. It's a subtlety about being a southerner that is so complicated. Something in my head told me if I can win over Octavia on this, um, you know, maybe more than maybe more than five people will give the book a chance. I made a decision that changed my life, and I'm really glad because. There's a part of me that would have closed that book had she not been a friend of a friend. We all on a party line to God, but you, you sitting right in this hill. When Catherine finally allowed me to read her manuscript, it spoke to me so profoundly. It was just a perfect time capsule, and she got it. She wasn't making a statement on race. But she was writing people of a certain economic level, education level and they were beautifully written and extremely intelligent women. I knew many of the women who inspired these characters. I had a single mom who was raising me and a woman named Carol Lee kind of co-raised me with my mother. I said, Catherine, this is beautiful and you know I've got to make it into a movie and she goes, I know. Both of our parents were divorced in a neighborhood where Everyone seemed to be living these perfect lives. And I think that's another reason why Tate and I clung to our maids, the black women in our lives, so much because we had these broken families we were dealing with. Right now, we're standing in front of the home that we used as Constantine's home. The Tallahatchie River flows behind. And uh, we just thought this would be a beautiful location for Constantine's home, especially since there would be certain spiritual flashback elements to her character. 
What's interesting about this house we use for Constantine is a woman who is now deceased named Rosa lived here, and evidently she would walk from work from this house to the house right over there where she worked for many years, much like Constantine did. I had just finished a, a feature film called Pretty Ugly People, and Catherine came out to Montana to watch me film. And about that time, she told me that she was just really discouraged. She'd been turned down by over 60 agents. Every rejection letter was a cattle prod that just pushed me further. We initially optioned the novel in order to do it independently, do it for like a five, $10 million film, um, because Tate had only done a couple of smaller projects. Well, and then she got an agent. And the agent realized what it was. And in about two weeks, there were three publishers after the novel. Tate and I are driving down the road, and an act of God blows through the, the highway in front of us, a tornado that has wiped out the road. And we have to pull over to a gas station. And then the phone rings. It's her publisher announcing that she's debuting on the New York Times bestseller list in her first week. Tate runs and gets some wine coolers, and I snap a photo of them. In my mind, I was thinking, Catherine's life is never gonna be the same. This moment is so unique and special, and it's, it, it's so cool to be around your friends when something like that happens. As it came out and was, you know, number one on the New York Times bestseller list, and it stayed there and stayed there, and, and the reviews were outstanding. I was anywhere I went, and on, on a plane, on the beach, on the boardwalk, and everywhere, people had that book in their hands. So I was like, this is extraordinary. This is a, this is a phenomenon. Um, is Tate going to still be able to direct it? You have to live there and experience it to tell that story and to tell the truth. And when I finally told everybody I was going with Tate, nobody supported me. And that, of course, helped make up my mind. When you tell me I can't have something, by damn, I'm gonna go get it. We are at Little Zion Baptist Church outside of Greenwood, and this is the church I selected to be Abilene and Minnie's church. I was worried at first that this church is so far out in the country, and in the novel, Abilene and Minnie had a church, you know, inside Jackson, and uh, there's cotton fields all around us, so with little movie magic, we just never widened up big enough to see the scope and scale of the land around us, so we can't stay tight on the church, and this became the church that Abilene and Minnie went to in Jackson, Mississippi. I had been supporting Tate Taylor as a director for years. At one of our last meetings, um, he said, oh, I said, what are you thinking of doing next? And he said, oh, there's this book that a friend of mine wrote. And he gave it to me and said, see what you think of this. And he explained the story. And I thought, well, this is kind of, you know, chick lit. I'm not really interested in this. So I gave it to my wife, Monica. And I said, can you read this and tell me what you think of it? I get a call from her a few days later. And she said, because I'm at work, and she had finished it. And she said, this is an amazing book. You have to read it. You guys it would be crazy not to make this movie. I had been talking to Chris Columbus for years. He, he loved my first short film, and he loved my, my feature. And even with them on board, we had trouble. People were passing because of me, understandably. And then uh, Stacy Snyder and um, Steven Spielberg came into the picture. Basically, Chris and Spielberg met and came to the conclusion that Stephen did that if, if I had written this screenplay, then I could direct the movie. We all just basically toasted and said, OK, this Cinderella story keeps going. Let's just go to Mississippi. Action. And talking about casting the help, first piece of the pie, no pun intended, is Octavia Spencer is many. There are certain traits and characteristics about the way she carries herself and the way she looks you in the eye when she's talking to you that I admired so much and thought, oh, I'm dying to put that on the page. She gave Minnie a very sharp tongue, and that is what we share in common. Everything else, um, uh, I had to model her after someone, and I.
I um, modeled her after my mom, who um, wasn't a uh, an abused wife, but she was a mother of seven kids and did the best she could to raise us. The fact that Tate gave that part to Octavia was just, um, it made me cry. I was so excited for her and for all, you know. It was just a, just a great story of friendship and loyalty that doesn't really happen in, in Hollywood, or you don't hear about those stories very often. And I've done all of Tate's little movies. Believe me, I've done a lot of his low, low, low budget movies when I've been working 18 hour days on other, like when I was working on West Wing and Tate would make me come out on the weekends to do his little movies. And, but he always made it so much fun. That's one thing, Tate. His first important thing on the set is that the food is great and that everyone have a good time. There was a wonderful family atmosphere and that camaraderie from the crew, uh, from the studio, when the studio came to visit, it was just kind of like old home week. A lot of us actors, you know, um, the relationships gelled. Jessica Chastain is one of my dearest friends. My first audition, um, when I first went in, Octavia was the reader. She was reading with me, she was reading many. And we did our scenes, and right when it fit, you know, we're, we said our last lines, we're still staring at each other, and she looks at me and she goes, I love you. I said, I love you too. Octavia and I immediately had that relationship. I had to find my Skeeter, which I'd always said, I just saw Joan Cusack at 20. Who is this person out there now? And Emma was the first person I met with. Each of the characters are so easy to fall in love with. I, when I read the book, I fell immediately kind of in love with Skeeter. She's vulnerable and learning with you as an audience what the truth of living in Jackson, Mississippi in 1963 was. And um, so you can kind of see the story through her eyes. Viola coming on board was the cherry on top. She really understood the importance of how grounded Abilene needed to be, how still and powerful and not a victim. For me, it felt like a movie where it wasn't just a chance for me to create a character that was interesting and complicated, but it was also a chance for me to be in a movie that illuminated a part of our history that we have a tendency to be silent about. I think one of the things that's so special about The Help is that it really, it, it captures a period of time um, in a really, in a very honest and a very entertaining way. With these characters, we have a chance to represent visually the old South, the new South as it was in 63, architecturally and aesthetically. Jackson doesn't really exist anymore in the form of 1963. I mean, it just would have been an ungodly amount of work to do, whereas Greenwood is just this little town 90 miles north that's got exactly one version of every perfect location that we need. I grew up around coming to Greenwood in the area as a kid, and I just always loved the town, and it's kind of a time capsule in itself. And we just started knocking on doors, and Greenwood just opened their homes. Hi, I'm Jack Johnson. Welcome to my house. <laughs> This is Hilly's house. Actually, it's my house, but this was Hilly's house in the movie. They did a lot of filming in here. I remember Bryce Dallas Howard was at the head of the table. They spent almost a day in here filming that scene. Pie can safely be eaten in my dining room. <clears throat> we'll put that on the record. When you're trying to create a period film about such a specific place, when you can be in the place and you can be with the people who lived there, <laughs> we're able to just go into people's attics and, and go into their basements, and it's all Mississippi. We've had a lot of good times here. My wife and I like to entertain. Maybe we were a tiny bit famous for our Christmas Eve parties. They were always a lot of fun, and we enjoyed having our friends. The hospitality is wonderful. So we've just felt coming here and just being outsiders, we felt so welcomed in the town and they've shared with us also their experiences of growing up and what it was like. And I think that if we were shooting this in a soundstage in Los Angeles, it would be a completely different movie. 
This is the large pick bathroom that the movie people uh, had such a fit over at first because of its size. I love to tell people the story that the wonderful, charming, beautiful Sissy Spacek was sitting in my kitchen in costume with a little cocktail hat on and just, just as pretty as she could be. When you get here and it's just a whole complete world, there's a quiet, you hear the trains at night, you work with extras during the day and then you see them at the grocery store in the evening. So here we are, we find ourselves in Greenwood and cameras are about to roll and I'm on the set and there's my best friend Catherine who's come here for the summer and Brunson and, and we're just looking at each other and, and it just hit me, wow. Three years ago, my friend wrote this novel. Now here we are in Greenwood, Mississippi, in our home state, honoring these women that were so important to us and we're getting to do it right. I just can't believe how everything's fallen into place over the past two years. It's just been the ride of a lifetime. There's a sacredness between me and Tate that we fought hard for this, and we've had doors shut in our face, and we felt we stuck to our guns because we felt like it was a story that needed to be told. Not only was the help a love letter to Dimitri and from Catherine, but by directing this, it would be essentially a love letter to Carol from Tate. This is Carol Lee, pretty much raised me. I just felt this overwhelming need to talk about these women, these women that for all practical purposes have raised and formed the lives of our senators and our doctors and our lawyers and our mothers. And, and I wanted to show their story. And, and really, for me personally, it's, it affected my life. I mean, Carol Lee was a mother of mine and, and she's this beautiful, quiet, smart lady in Jackson, Mississippi. And, I didn't want, I didn't want to have happen to me what happened to Catherine with Dimitri. I wanted people to know.